In this video, I'm going to explain how to make sense out of and reconcile the equations of John Bell with quantum mechanics. And I'm going to demonstrate it using David Merman's experiment. I'm not going to explain the statistical difference between John Bell's equations and quantum mechanics. This is aimed at serious researchers who already know what I'm talking about. And in the experiment, you send pairs of entangled particles in opposite directions towards two measuring devices. And in each device, there are three spin sensors, which senses whether a particle is spinned up or spinned down. A, B and C, and they're all set at 120 degrees angles from each other. So if we look at spin sensor A for example, and we use this schematic, anything above the black line is spin up, anything below the black line is spin down. And if machine 1 and machine 2 are both set to A, they will both record the opposite spin 100% of the time. So if sensor A is spin up in the first machine, it will be spin down in the second machine, and vice versa. Now if we have two machines, one with the centre oriented vertically, and the other one oriented horizontally, then in the first machine, if it records spin up, then the second machine will record spin up 50% of the time, and spin down 50% of the time. Remember, if anything is above the spin line, it's spin up. If it's below the spin line, it's spin down. And we can say the same thing from the perspective of the second machine. If it's spin up in the machine, which is a 90 degrees angle from the first machine, then it'll be spin up in the first machine 50% of the time, spin down in the first machine 50% of the time. And if you were to overlay the schematic of those two machines, one on top of the other, you'll see that when one is spin up in machine one, say for example, then it's spin down half the time and spin up half the time in machine two. So when we get spin up in the second spin center, then in the first spin center, we get spin down 50% of the time and spin up 50% of the time. It works both ways. And that seems straightforward if we take it at face value. So now let's overlay three spin sensors in a schematic. So the black horizontal line is the division between spin up and spin down for sensor A, the yellow line is the division for spin sensor B, and the blue line is the division for spin sensor C. So in effect, what John Bell argues is that if we use this pointer, where one end reflects what's happening in machine 1, and the other end reflects what's happening in machine 2, then because we know we will always get the opposite spin, so spin sensor A in machine 1 is spin up a third of the time in 120 degrees between the black line and the yellow line, the opposite end of the needle will be spin down for spin sensor B in machine 1, therefore spin up in machine 2, which is exactly what we see in the schematic. And of course the same happens for spin down. If it's spin down in machine 1, the other end of the needle will be spin up in machine 1, therefore spin down in machine 2. And then you have the two areas, we have a 60 degree angle between the yellow line and the black line. So in effect, what John Bell showed is that if we take everything considered as equal, then 50% of the time we take it from the perspective of machine 1, 50% of the time we take it from the perspective of machine 2. So if it's spin up in machine 1, it'll be spin down in machine 2. If it's spin down in machine 1, it'll be spin up in machine 2. So if we regard the full circle as the full time, then one third of the time altogether, you're going to get opposite spins in the two machines in those two 60 degree zones, which is one third of the overall time. However, that needle is representing two different directions from the perspective of one machine, but we're measuring with sensors which are set at 120 degrees angles from each other. So let's use needles which reflect the fact that the two sensors are set at 120 degrees angles from each other in the two machines. And let's take it from the perspective of sensor A and sensor B. And the orange zone in the circle represents the full time range for sensor A, and the yellow zone in the circle represents the full time range for sensor B. And when we do this, what we find is that because the range of the yellow between the orange part of the circle and the black line is a 30 degree angle, so when machine 1 is set to spin sensor A, a quarter of the time spin sensor A will be recording spin up, and spin sensor B will be in the spin up position in machine 1, therefore spin down position in machine 2. And of course the same dynamics happen if we take it from the perspective of spin sensor B or spin sensor C in machine 1 or machine 2. So if the two machines are set to A and B for example, a quarter of the time you're going to get opposite spins recorded in the two machines. So the hidden variable is which perspective are we taking from, which spin sensor and which machine. 